Good afternoon and welcome to Show Studio. Uh, today it's Dior Day, the first uh, show of Kim Jones for Dior. Uh, and we're going to see the show that has just ended in Paris. And we're going to discuss about um, this new debut for Kim Jones. And to do that, I have an amazing panel. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Tim McTaggart. I make music and films. Hello, I'm Edwin Moni. I'm an artist and designer. Hello, I'm Natalie Kahn, and I teach fashion history and theory at Central St. Martins in London and at La Combra in Brussels. And I'm Dina Bonich, and I'm um, the fashion feature assistant at Ten Magazine. And I have to acknowledge uh, the presence of Edwin here. <laughs> now you can see he is the man behind this amazing set, so he's the artist who designed this set for us. Thank you. We love it very much. Thank you. We keep it forever, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, okay, so Kim Jones. Kim Jones, as everybody knows, left Vuitton. There was a lot talking about him going to Burberry, going to Versace, going here and there. And I read a beautiful piece today in the New York Times where um, Beccari, who's the new CEO of Dior, so there's a lot of new at Dior, said um, he was offered a job by other houses and uh, I was uh, made CEO and I decided in one week to get in and get him back you know, keeping in the group. And so here he is, just presented his first show. Um, he was uh, talking about that to, um, I think, Guy Trubay or Mathieu Scheiner. At the New York Times, anyway, and he was saying, he was talking a little bit like John was talking yesterday about his show, um, uh, talking about Taylor coming back mm. to men's fashion and going into the Dior archives and looking at women's couture, which is, in different words, a little bit what John was explaining in his podcast and in, the, in his interview for WWD. So again, another uh, designer who says, uh, we've seen enough of streetwear, and we all know that in a way, Kim was the, you know, mm -hmm. the king of that. Uh, we've seen enough of streetwear. I don't want to see another t-shirt with a branded name in the label. I think it's time to go back and give people something surprising, something new. And so he went into the archive, of course, he found a lot. Um, as John, he wanted to take cuts that are typical for women and, and uh, you know, make them into high fashion for men. He doesn't call it couture, but that's the hint. And, um, and so that's his debut of Dior. Anything that you want to say before we I think it, the it's so interesting, Emma, that you you're looking at through the lens now with your introduction, the lens of fashion journalists and how they're presented. And that's something, so sort of thinking about the panel today also that I did. So sort of, there is a narrative that we always associate with Kim. And that's not what we maybe think of him looking at the clothes, but the way that journalists present him and looking at that, you know, through their, through that image that is constantly, you know, that, that sort of narrative that they're constantly pushing. He is a, a craftsman, he is a researcher, he is an archivist, um, he is a collector, he is a traveler. I mean, you know, if you wanted to just sort of define him or split it into all of these different roles that he fills, and, and you know, the media is really happy to support hmm. that image. And I think that they're almost now, I think it's, it's natural to think, okay, so moving away from street, but I think you know, this idea of the new is great, but going back again to those, those images that you fulfilled as a craftsman, yeah. maybe that then fits and, and links well. And I would like to add, because that's very interesting what you said. He also said something that I thought was very interesting. He said, I, I really need people to be surprised. You know, he said, <laughs> I'm not going to do heady. You know, Hedy is one of the most defining designers of our times. We can't wait to see what he's going to do. I'm not going to do Hedy. I'm not going to do Chris Van Hash. I mean, I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do what I've done for Vuitton or what I've done before. You know, he said, I'm a designer. I can adapt to the brand I work for. And I thought that was very interesting because some designer, actually, they bring themselves wherever they go. And we haven't seen this show, but He's saying he doesn't want to do this. He says, I bring my sensibility, who I am, but I'm going to work for Dior. There's a difference, I think. There's a, um, I feel like there's two types of designers, the ones that are creative directors and the ones that are actual designers. So we can see um, with people like Jonathan Anderson, with people like Virgil Abloh, um, those people are more creative directors, which is kind of a sense, bringing their own vision, 
and it's not just about what the clothes are designed like and what do they look like. It's about the kind of atmosphere. It's about the who is sitting the whole front row. List. It was like it's more of like an over like kind of overview of the brand. Mm -hmm. um, Kim Jones, even though he always speaks about branding and all of that, it's his work. He's a designer's designer. He always focuses on like even an amazing um, to draw a parallel. I know it's very early in the panel, but we, it's kind of inevitable to draw power between him and Virgil. Uh, in the Nike collaborations that they did, it was released on the same day. And you could see like that one of them was completely, Kim's was completely about kind of like redesigning this idea of sportswear and kind of looking at the, how it's cut and what the textile is, while Virgil's was more about like the people that were wearing them, the, the print and all of that. Like, so it's it's a very very different approach to fashion. Yeah, very good example. Um, so his his which we've seen now, which I um, with the whole thing with women's wear. Um, you mentioned Galliano, who's a designer, designer, designer. Yeah. and also I have to bring Raf into play, um, who did the same thing a few days ago Absolutely. with his kind of duchesse satin, which is all he about mentioned women. Couture as well. Exactly. He so, did as well. Um, so it, it, I think them three had very similar ideas, um, and now that we've looked at Dior, it was it all ended up looking very, very differently, all three of them. Um, by the way, I had a look at the McQueen show. I didn't read any interviews, yeah. so I don't know how she presented it, but it was very much high, mm -hmm. well done, uh, luxury tailoring. So I think, yeah. Hers was about like this kind of, I know. I re I've the coat has yeah, taken like over the from Soho the Soho in the mid-century yeah. mid Soho and kind of um, Francis Bacon and all of that kind of. That's the McQueen we're seeing now. Yeah, it's a yeah. very, it was very, very, very beautiful. But then again, like McQueen was never about streetwear with, uh, with Sarah Burton. Um, neither was Margiela last season with Galliano. It was very kind of different. So I, do, I don't think, I don't think they're going against the, their own grain. I think they're just continuing to doing their yeah. own thing. It just happens to be different than what everyone else is doing. Very well explained. Finn and Anne, you're very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> is a bomb going to explode? <laughs> no, that never happens with me, Mima. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it's kind of interesting. Like LVMH must be were like really quite clearly like shaking in their boots because Kering are just absolutely dominating mm. the scene right now with Balenciaga and Gucci. So with this and Saint Laurent, believe it or not, but it's selling oh, yeah. very well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, it doesn't surprise me. Like you mentioned earlier, that. Uh, um, the new CEO got in super fast to sort that out because we Let's all had we all had different predictions on that Louis Vuitton panel, his last show where he would end up. Everyone was saying different things, and I don't think anyone really. I thought Burberry. I remember. I was yeah, like, and I I'm thought sure. Versace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then also getting Hedy Slimane into Celine is like you know that's like the like ultimate like you got to have like this guy. He's going to sort it out. They're striking back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Pokemon, got to collect them all. But it's very interesting, this war that is happening now. Like, you know, Kering is getting it all. And so LVMH, they're now getting the best designer. Chanel suddenly delivered figures yeah. in 108 years of huge secrecy. Suddenly they said, hey, we're 9.6 billion. Yeah as well, so we're not really the last, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that's hilarious. So it's, it's quite interesting to see how this... I just really wanted to see Hedy at Chanel and... At, at Celine, Woody. you mean? No, I, want to oh. see, I wanted to see him at Chanel. Oh, okay. I mean, Celine would be great. It's slightly, like, um, I guess, cooler and less kind of, like, global. Um, but I really was excited about the idea of, of Hedy at Chanel, and I hope that's I, what happens. I have a feeling that... Be Phoebe at Chanel, that's inevitable. Uh, um, Inevitable. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's. I, I needed to say that on camera because I've been talking about that for a while, but I didn't have a camera next to me. But I really want to put it out there that I really feel that Phoebe Philo is going to go to Chanel as soon as um, space opens up. Okay, <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say something else. No, no, no. <laughs> I would like to hear what it has to say no, about I, Kim <clears throat> Dior. Well, I think just going off what you said about looking at the archive and couture mm -hmm. um, and doing that in sort of the context of John also saying that he was trying to do like couture for men and that this sort of climate now it's like menswear is taken off in such a way 
and grown so much that now we've established that there's a real ready-to-wear market. It'd be amazing to see menswear go into a more creative, um, sort of high-end place. And so I feel like you have these sort of behemoth designers that have such a history, such a legacy behind each of them um, at these new companies. Or not new, but it's a new fit for them. So I think it'll be interesting to see who sort of takes that. I mean, is it, is, it a th is it like possible? Like in my head, it doesn't really, um, I don't know. There, there are obviously certain very flamboyant um, characters who want to have men's couture, but I think there's something about menswear that's in its brand, like ready to wear. Well, it's funny you say that because I started my panel yesterday with more or less the same question and actually everybody said, why not? You know, it's just, mm. could, the difference is that it's bespoke and that's what Savvy Row has been doing for years, except that now, since it's in brands in the hands of designers or great designers, it's more creative. I think, I think yeah, but there's that, that sort of sharp difference between several row and that culture, yeah. Just, yeah. Right. that seasonal change. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about that tradition. And I was thinking also recently there's an exhibition in Arnhem at the moment uh, in Holland. It, we, it was mentioned yesterday as well. It? Yeah, it, you know, very interesting. It, it, it calls itself the new luxury, and one of yeah. the big statements that they're trying to make is that we are moving away from seasonal change, and I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I have to admit I haven't seen the exhibition, but even looking at this change now and what's happening in menswear, I'm just saying, you know, Severo is not as much about seasonal change as what we're seeing here, which is about taste and uh, sort of sensibilities. Didn't give and to his show yesterday. No, mm -hmm. so, so you know, so I think this is not happening. I think it's the complete opposite. We are moving back to fashion trend and mm -hmm. seasonal change. Mm -hmm. I think just Really? Yes. <laughs> there you are, I, I sort of disagree, but it would be nice to... Well, we are already know. moving away from this idea of streetwear and active wear as something that is dominating luxury. We're already looking at a different aesthetic, and that will ultimately influence yeah, sorry, taste. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm, I don't I'm interrupting think you back. we're moving... I, I, I agree that mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I think the trends are back mm -hmm. and yeah. that everything goes, I mean, we see, you will see the here, the color and flowers and all these genderless trends, whatever. But I do think that seasons like in fashion dictated are over and they will be more. Yes, more we have over. multiple trends and we have fashions, of course, you know, that's of course, you know, something that we've, we've witnessed now for 20, 30 years. But but still, I think there are now directions that are more identifiable. I think that has yeah. more to do with theme, though. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think that it has more to do with sort of a theme. I think fashion kind of has this like terrible habit of choosing a theme every season or every you know, and has to like explain that through whatever they're doing. And so I feel like that that seasonal choice also comes into this sort of idea for whatever you're going to design in terms of like, oh, it's spring, so we have to do floral, or um, you know, it feels like there's a certain amount of appropriateness. I don't know, I think yeah. it has more to do with going back to that versus a trend, versus necessarily, like you said, having to do like a season for the yeah. year. Does that make sense? Like mm, I just think yeah, it, I do understand, yeah. There's, but there is like something to do with season that we're thinking creatively. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, season, does exist when it comes to like, A, it's, we dress according to season. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially if we buy clothes for summer, we're gonna, you know, shorts, we're, we're not necessarily gonna wear in winter. So there's that set, uh, idea of season. And then there's also the buying season, which I think it's still kind of, we, we, we are really, it's really difficult to move away from that in a sense. There is the sense of like what is Hedy now said he's, been, he's gonna do with uh, Celine, that he's not gonna have one collection that comes out at once, but it's going to be continuous drop. Yeah, there's which drops. Is to, which is to, I think, which is to battle the the high street kind of idea exactly. of like copying like straight away and all of that. Yeah. And what my my um, thought process is, if we remove the idea of season, it's going to be very difficult for brands to have you know something that's iconic like a bag or a jacket, it, it becomes more difficult for these kind of individual items that become trend, the trendy items to become trends. 
because it doesn't allow a time span what does, like, for example, you know, a jacket or like the Balmain jacket that was like with um, before, um, sorry, before Olivia Brustig um, with like the kind of the yeah. high shoulder one. That was kind of a season piece and everyone was wearing it and then it went to stores and then people got to buy it. I think it, when we go, it, if we think about this kind of seasonless approach to collections, I think we're really, I don't think it's beneficial for the businesses if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, it does make sense, but I still disagree. <laughs> no, that, yeah. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about like hard luxury. I'm thinking about jewelry, you know, I, in, they never had a season. I mean, mm. now there's fashion jewelry, but when jewelry were yeah. five jewelers, there was never a season, you know, but you still have the iconic Cartier Panther and Bulgari Serpenti and mm. Tiffany, um, the, 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 the grief of the, of the engagement ring. So, and they, because exactly, they had time to become an icon. And I think, and I think that, as you rightly said, it's, it's to fight the high street, but I think the way forward is not to do eight collections a year. It's to do one big collection and different drops. So you keep interest in the, in the store, mm -hmm. but you don't need to do too much stuff. And, 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 it's always summer somewhere in the world, or it's always winter somewhere in the world. So, and people travel much more than 20 years ago. And so, you see in, in the winter collection, you can see fur and a bikini, or in the summer collection. So, I think season in the way, I mean, I remember it was like in fall, winter it was coats, and in mm -hmm. spring, summer it was shorts. You know, it's, that's, that's gone. And yeah, hence, John didn't even call it with a season. In sense of trend and, um you know, how important is active wear going to be in future? Do we feel that? that I mean, I don't know. We were, I was talking to my son on the way here, and we were talking about the uh, Supreme Collab. I'm sure you know we've discussed this on these panels <laughs> so many times. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was the moment when luxury became much more available than the streetwear brand. It oversaturated you know, a brand that was, that, that had controlled demand and uh, controlled supply and, you know, and, and extreme demand. And was that, you know, was that the death nail for this trend? I mean, I always find with this collaboration, it was often like marketed as though it was this a moment in which, um, you know, something became extraordinarily available to everybody. Mm. But, but the people that I saw wearing it, buying it, were incredibly rich rappers. They were people from mm. Dubai, mm. new rich people from China. And these are all the it's types expensive. of people who are driving mm. the luxury market. Mm. If you talk to anyone who works on the sales floor in Dover Street Market, any of these big shops uh, in London, you know, they, they actually, they just, they, they know who, who the mm. big spenders are in those shops. Because the minimum wage in this country does not allow for, you know, British consumers to really just get involved with this stuff. It's mm -hmm. all tourists. Totally. Um, and that's what's driving taste. And that's why I think there's this kind of real race to the bottom for this kind of ultra rich, like really like tasteless class of people. Um, well, they're not all tasteless. I mean, there's some people with money that have taste. But it is true, I'm with you when you say, I mean, this is supposed to be for kids in the street, but it's an expensive collaboration. So yeah, you, I mean, you might. The, the idea of accessibility, there's a bit of an issue with it because it seems accessible to lots of people, but actually it's not. You know, so I think that there's a sort of, by doing Louis Vuitton for Supreme, it seems like, oh, it's this cool activewear street brand and that lots of people are going to be able to engage with it. But actually, like you said, the people who are, are not. Um, you know, the everyday person. You know, Kim addressed that in, did you read the interview in the New York Times? He addresses this in, he doesn't speak about Supreme, but he says, and I don't remember exactly, but something about the pricing, and he said, and we will have to soon watch the collection, but he says something, I may, I had bits of chains and buckles, you know, with all this collaboration that he made in this particular mm. show, is to have, items at the lower price point to have a wider um, audience. But it doesn't say it in a marketing way. It says it's like, I want to give people that cannot afford that jacket the possibility to buy a bit of it. 
But I have also to say that when you work for Louis Vuitton or Dior, you're not going to be mass. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it's fine. going like, to be I really expensive. strongly believe yeah, in the happy. idea, I completely believe you know. in the idea of luxury, but yeah. I think what's going on now yeah. is this really deceitful narrative yeah. about the yeah. accessibility the narrative, of luxury. Yeah, I agree. There and I think because like, lots of us are it's involved in the world, you know, we see it a lot more, or you know, there might be certain kids who you know, manage to excel in the fashion industry who haven't come from you know, particularly rich means and, you know, get access to this stuff and, and seem like icons to other, other kids who can relate to them. But, um, you know, there's an extraordinary wealth disparity that's, that's yeah. going on and I think that needs to be talked about it's, a lot more. It's almost like kind of the fashion's reply to people saying like, oh, only, only rich people buy fashion. Fashion is only for like the really rich. It was almost like kind of a defense mechanism where they were like, oh, no, no, but see, we do this for like, that is not just high fashion. I think that's sometimes streetwear can also, like I think that's why streetwear became such a trend. It's because it was almost served, served as an excuse to these big fashion houses to kind of be like, oh yeah, but see, like this is a track suit. So this is much cheaper than um, a tailored but jacket. I never really felt that, that, that you know, like as Kim says, streetwear is a stupid way of saying things. Everybody's in the street and everybody wears yeah. clothes. But anyway, that trend, I don't think it came because luxury wanted to give us a mass market fashion. I think it happened, A, because someone came along and said, well, this is the way kids want to dress. And because the high street became so powerful and exactly. so but it, but it also it also made brand I mean, you know, so in two thousand, Supreme bootlegged Louis Vuitton and they got into a lot of trouble in yes. 2000. So that is, that is a different engagement with luxury. That's sort of the Dapper Den Harlem approach where you yeah. take something, ironically, and you twist it, and you do something that is ultimately much cooler than paying, I don't know, a few thousand for mm -hmm. a bag. That is actual Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And that's what Street Fair was about. It was about that self-conscious referencing and tearing apart what luxury means. Now yeah. luxury has won. Yes. Yeah, because they taken it, it all. Took the, it yeah. took it all. It took it under its wing. It was almost like as if they bought, you know, luxury bought streetwear in a sense. I know it's like yeah. kind of an overstatement, but it's it's what what happened. And it's it's when you look at collections like Margiela's yesterday, like that's a collection that kind of goes completely against any idea of, you know, of those traditional, like what we're talking about now, like streetwear, whether it's, what is it? Like, it has nothing to do with any of that. I'm glad. It's like, the exactly. Way. Let's move on. Exactly. Yeah. No, Let's leave right. the street to the street. Exactly. Yeah. And right. it can always, I think there should always be designers that do that, and, it, and there will be a market forever, but there, there has to be something said that we don't need, not every, like, high, high fashion brand needs to make a trainer. Like, that's not necessary. I think, I think the issue yeah. is that we're now at a moment where we're recycling 90s um, and early 2000s street, streetwear culture, and it's being recycled over and over and over again because there's really no organic scenes that are springing up in mm -hmm. cities like London, mm -hmm. New York, um, or LA, or wherever, that are generating the kind of like gr youth groundswell of new ideas, new fashions, new looks, new music, new everything, new magazines. Um, so what we're doing is we're just stuck in this kind of moment where we're going back to things like Kim Jones is doing, Cause, which is like a classic bathing ape thing. That obviously, he is someone who's always been obsessed with that kind of world, but we're just recycling these motifs mm -hmm. over and over again. Yeah. Supreme, you know, I mean, how many times do we have to see that logo? It's so, it's been so recycled, so overdone um, at this point. I think, you know, we're just kind of waiting for something new to come. From well, that's what it was saying. So I hate interrupting you guys, but can Let's we, look at this. Can yeah. we have a look <laughs> since it's a panel on this okay. show? And I just wanted to, uh, just one thing regarding streetwear. Sorry, I really love like what Marnie did. I don't know if you've seen, which was a, a yeah, kind of it. a piss take on on kind of sportswear. Yes, sports. Because was it was about literally sports. Exactly. So I kind of take like there is new approaches to that those ideas. So, but yeah, let's. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so we see the centerpiece um, by American artist Coz. Um, it's made with real roses, real rose petals, and it's the avatar of Mr. Dior. I think this is so blasphemous, honestly. I think cause is, cause is like, 
Cause is one of the most like trashy like art world guys ever. It's the kind of stuff that like like the worst type of people in the art world collect. It's like um, you know like divorce attorneys and like real estate brokers. <laughs> it's so like it's the trashiest thing in the art world. And for Kim, it obviously holds a lot of power because it's like like I was saying earlier, like it was a bathing ape thing. It's kind of had this like little bit of streetwear momentum, but. I think it's such a it's such a late reference. It's like really like mm. dad's reference. Embarrassing, you but, know. But talking about dads, if we do a Fro <laughs> <laughs> speaking of dads, talking about dads, doing a Freudian reading yeah. of this massive sort of phallic object in the center, oh my which goodness. is surrounded by celebrities, uh, which is also then <laughs> symbolizing Dior as a father figure. Um, which the question is then: Are we Killing mm. the father, or are we? I think oh we're giving it. Wow. We really <laughs> went there. Yeah, I love it. I think we're enhancing the father, not killing the father. But so yeah, it's, so it's I agree with you. So we're the power of mm. that figure. Okay, let's 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 see what. In his show mm. notes, he did talk a lot about the legacy of Dior and kind of the inspirations of Dior himself. But also, which reminded me a lot of Maria Grazia's first collection with Dior, yes. because she looked also at what well, Galliano did, like. Kim did in his they, like. His neither of them were looking very hard, clearly, because <laughs> they both. I mean, no, but the saddlebag, that you know, that was the kind of idea that he did now for men that was taken from Galliano. So mm. it's taking these codes exactly what Maria did, like yes. codes from the history and all of different like creative directors and kind of giving them your own take, like the logo, uh, mm. mesh top, and stuff like that. I mean, if this is like what someone comes up with after they've been looking at like couture Dior mm. and women's wear. Well, I can't, I can't judge without touching it and seeing it from clothes. Mm. From but I mean, true. just the clothes, shape. Like, I mean, true. I don't, I don't know what the material. I don't. It's very wide. We don't see very well, so I don't know. Yes, I can't one. decide it yeah. until you know you see it from clothes. You touch it. You, the but. It's very simple, and, and as Kim was saying, sometimes to do simple, it's 10 times more difficult. Even the cut, a simple cut, is more difficult than a complicated one. And it does look still but I don't know. more like Dior tailoring. It, it doesn't really look a lot like his tailoring at Louis Vuitton, in terms of like it has this kind of like harness element, which is very much what Chris Van Asch did during his time. It was all this like kind of like really narrow cuts for the jackets and stuff like that, which I think he's kind of kept some of it. I don't think he's like turned it all the way on his head. I think Chris mm -hmm. was much closer to the style of, of Hedy. This, this is so no, no, far for sure, from that. Style-wise, aesthetic, but I'm talking about like the kind the of cat? cutting. Yeah, I feel like the you jacket. You see that too? Yeah. There are definitely it's, nods it's to it with more. some of the harnessing that, that's coming up, I think, a bit later. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of like, I mean, uh, there's like lots of real Kim Jones like signatures, yeah. like the like uh, round neck kind of bomber yeah, jacket, very Kim like Jones. collar, um, it's the shorts. It's interesting what you said about the cut, though, because I think with Hedy and Chris, it is sort of like it went from being really slim to sort of coming out a little bit, but still being a very sort of narrow shape, yeah. especially on the leg. And I think with this, it's very feels a lot more open and it's easy. Yeah, it's lighter and mm -hmm. airier. But I don't know if that's necessarily, I mean, I don't know quite I mean, how I to take that, to be honest, because I feel like you get away from it being Dior. I feel like there's a lot of textile there that feels Dior, like the print, the image of it, mm -hmm. and the color, you know, like the pinks against the grays, but I think that... Um, the pink and the print come from the archives. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you can see that. that that's the Mr. Dior, Monsieur Dior mm -hmm. pink, exact shade of pink. I must say, I always love the men in pink, mm. and it's coming back. Mm. It's, I mean, yeah, the, the color is beautiful, but um, mm. I think it's also important, it, like a thing that Kim always does is kind of like these senses of collaborations. And for this collection, he did like all the like buckles were made by- um, By Matthew Williams. By Matthew Williams uh, of Alex. The jewelry is made by um, you of like yes. Ambush. Um, Philip Tracy, I think, or was it Stephen Jones? No, Stephen, Stephen Jones, Jones, Dior. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Stephen sorry. Jones. Sorry. Oh my God, sorry. And the hat that he made, but we haven't seen it yet, the millinery in here, it comes also straight from an original hat that was made um, for one of the Mr. Dior, Dior shows. Mm. So, you know, there is this 
you know, looking, I, I, that's why I think the, the, the big man in the middle is mm -hmm. an homage to father and not killing father. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Come on, he's covered in roses. So, I know, you know it's gentle. Why, yeah. Yes. So here comes the tailoring. That's a very Dior jacket. Exactly, yeah. that's kind of the thing. But not a heady jacket, that's more of a Monsieur Dior jacket. We don't have the music, I'm sorry. We were not very well helped but by the Dior <laughs> PR. They didn't really believe in um, show studio wanting to do this, so we didn't get um, a link um, to the film. This. So I'm sorry, we're showing it without music. You can say. <laughs> the, these florals were made, I, that was in one of the video teasers that they released prior to the collection. Yes. It was made like kind of inspired by the John Galliano Dior. Um, oh. These floral prints and stuff um, from his like kind of, yeah. It's it a like, John Galliano print. Sure, kind of, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a John Galliano print. I, I know it's like inspiration for a video. It's like yeah. kind of uh, reminiscing of the John Galliano Couture collections mm. for Dior, like the kind of over over the top. Um, okay. It's interesting that it's looking at women's wear as inspiration, isn't it? I mean, it's also I was looking at Hedy again before coming today, and why, you know, his time as a menswear designer at Dior was so significant culturally, because I think it marked a turning point Completely. when a designer, a menswear designer, was influenced by art and culture in a way that just didn't happen before, like, you know, with the Bowie Berlin or with British Indie and, and photography. And, and that, it seems, it completely cleaned up the plate for what you know a menswear designer can do but i also thought that it's incredibly influential on women's wear what he was doing then the, well, the skinny was boy doing, look yeah, yeah was mm -hmm. incredibly influential mm -hmm. it launched a whole season of uh, seasons yes, absolutely mm -hmm. every of woman skinny, was yeah. wearing a suit and yeah. i and i think this it's almost the opposite here now we're seeing someone who was influenced by culture and i totally agree with you finn by by a kind of culture that has already been recycled um, but then being inspired by women's wear rather than the other way around. I can see a lot the women's wear inspiration here. Yeah. Inspiration yeah. here. I mean, those jackets, those double-breasted. Apparently, there's the double-breasted jackets are in a very thin cashmere, so thin that you can almost see through. Mm. Mm. So you know there are these techniques, and he was explaining how he says the 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 thing I had at my disposal at Vuitton are very different than what I have at my disposal at Dior. At Vuitton is very manufacture mm -hmm. and you know possibilities and money. Here is very couture and handmade, and so it makes you think in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I, I and and in this I'm with you, Finn. I can't see it. Mm -hmm. I think this collection, to be what I read, I probably needs to be seen yeah. from close and Definitely. and touch because like this. You know, I mean, you just got classic. There's things I like very much, you, things I like less, but that's subjective. Nobody cares. You know, it's. I can't I see care. what I. Well, not really. I don't think we're here to this. I mean. You've just got classic American menswear. It's like US aviator, brown leather US aviator jacket. You've got bomber jackets, mm -hmm. rucksacks, which is a men's bag. Mm. Um, this is just. I mean, it's just very Kim, very like safe menswear, very much in his like silhouette and style. Um, and like the prints, I just think the prints are so ghastly. Like they're really kind of like daddy, dad shirt, like kind of Tesco-y kind of, it's like, Whoa. yeah, it's like not, it's not cool. I don't see cool people wearing this. I, I do have to say like for me, like it's again, the, the whole idea of talking about women's wear um, and kind of this kind of gender and all of that. And that, if that's what it, you end up, it, that's what a guy that's like cool and like, thinks about gender in a kind of new, different way. Is that what he looks like? I really don't think so. I don't think like a, like a pink, full pink look is there to be like, oh, this is very mm. kind of no, that's not women's wear inspired. Or like, gen no, for me, this is, as Finn said, this is like just good old like men's yeah. like tailoring and all that. It's not, it's not, it doesn't look bad. I think it's, uh, it, it, it has a sense of Kim and I think it's very like, interesting that it's you can still see Diorness in it like 
It, it, Maybe that's uh, what Dior should be, because one thing that we know about Kim, and I think he's a good designer in, in the sense that he's someone who can bring, like it or not, he bring the narrative forward, but, but, or, and, mm -hmm. he cares about people being able to buy what he does mm -hmm. more than others. He's someone who says, I, I look around in the street, I want to see what people wear and what actually they want to wear, so I, I want to do a fashion that people actually then can buy, and this is very easy for Dior to sell, I think. Definitely. It's definitely accessible. It's very accessible. I don't know price-wise, but... Visually. Right. Visually, visually, visually accessible. It's very accessible. The shape is really definitely... You know, it's not outrageous, and maybe that's not his role. That's not Dior roles in the... No, it's the, it's the economy. The like, designers yeah. can't actually, right. like, do anything about how little people are paid these days like you know the whole this whole interest in actual what people on the street are wearing you know things like com you know com came out of a time when the, you know the minimum wage in japan was like enough for people to like actually go and buy these clothes mm -hmm. um you know i think that there's just something about the economics of now that mean that we're going to be stuck on this kind of you know you know luxury stuck in a luxury world that isn't accessible. Well, there are many people that can afford it, though. Many. But also, there's, like no, because, there's no aspiration because, about this. Like, what makes you think, want to like, go into the store if you and see, buy it? But that's a different thing. But I'm sorry if you see the figures in, of the big groups and the brands. I can no, tell no, you there there's are no, many people buying. Absolutely. There's and no, even if ready to wear is 10%, but 10% of 8 billion, it's a lot right. of money. So, you know, I, I, I hear you, and that's a whole different discussion, and I, and I agree, but there are many people that can buy expensive what's, clothes. What's like... Do they what, have the taste for it? That's a different story. What's like the, you know, Dior men's sort of iconic sellable piece? I don't know what that piece is necessarily. I, think there's, I mean, it's, I think people do really wear like Dior suits. Like for mm -hmm. a lot of brands, I don't think people buy, uh, I don't know, um, can't think, but like it's. I think Dior is like the men that are rich that maybe ha are not going to Jeeves and Hawks or like a yeah. Savile Row old school brand. They're gonna go to Dior and get a suit. Yeah. Um. If because it's probably right. Dior suit is less like less expensive than a Xenia suit probably. Um, I'm not sure. I wouldn't. I because I, wouldn't I think be like sure Xenia's. I think ah. Xenia's Xenia's tailoring is that that's kind of like the kind of the. The top, top, Disney and Berluti, Berluti probably mostly like are kind of like people that do like tailoring. They like they have different pounds. range of, of course. Uh, you know, it starts from a thousand and it goes up to totally bespoke. We're talking about I don't about think fashion, you can buy a suit fashion. a Dior for a thousand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, mean, I, I was talking more anything. about like the fashion aspect of it rather than um, going and having bespoke pieces. But I think like a jacket from Dior is kind of a thing that people do go and buy. Well, the question, I think, is do you think that the crowd that Hedy attracted at Dior, because he did, mm. um, continued buying Dior at, with Chris or not? Because today, we don't know. I mean, this is new, so we don't know if they're going to have a totally new mm. customer or not. But what happened in the past 10 years between Hedy and this? Well, I think Hedy, can, Hedy, was quite, Hedy was quite right to just kind of step back and let this moment happen. Yeah, but did they, did they keep the same customer? Do you think that all the customer that Hedy brought in, because Chris was from Hedy's school, so he wasn't that mm. far away, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know the figures. But, um, and I don't know who's buying this more than... We don't, I mean, it's changing. We, we can have this discussion in a year or two, but I think everything is now By going, changed. by looking at it now, just reflecting on the images that we saw, also what I liked about, about Kim's work at Louis Vuitton is that it was a very global brand that had mm -hmm. a real global appeal. And looking at these images, it, become, it feels very French, again, in, 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 an, in an odd way. And we talked about really wealthy clients. I see, like, the American... Yeah, yeah like, a very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Western, that's yeah. really Definitely. rich. It's that... Atlanta on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You know, waspy kind of... It's very weird, though. Yeah. That's not what Kim is. Right. Like, he's a, he's like a different flavor, for, for sure. Like right? I, 
I don't know. It's, I uh, think it's that's the mix that he get that, that what you get when you mix the Dior aspect because it's much more narrow than the usual Kim Jones silhouette. Like the usual Kim Jones, they're always like white shirts, white trousers. It's always like open, and this is much more I feel narrow for Kim. Like the trousers are not that wide legged. Um, everything is kind of like. It's almost like he toned down the Kimness and like brought in the Kimness Dior, yeah. um, and then it, what you get is this kind of weird mix, which is a bit Americana. Mm -hmm. like that kind he's of. a bit Americana. I mean, he's always been obsessed with American sportswear. Like that's one of his absolute mm. fascinations. He's been like, expe he's obsessed right. with a lot of things. <laughs> he's a type of designer that's like, you know, he's reference Christopher Nemeth. He's yeah. a, the yes. that type of designer that talks about Rachel Auburn, like all these like different people. Um, that's, yeah, that's his obsession with London club wear and this amazing exactly. archive. Yeah, of course. So he, he's the type of person that knows all the, like he's the designer that references designers in his collections. And so I think this is kind of almost like a capsule collection for Dior. <laughs> I hope you stop doing chunky he's a little sneakers big. as well. I'm so what? chunky oh. sneakers. You hope not, or you will have enough of them. I hope we stop doing chunky sneakers. They're not chunky, well, these ones, are they? Stuff. Well, not the, not the Converse ones, it's but like the other one. It's like all regular fit. I must, I must say, I don't yeah, dislike that flower. Fit. You know, like white. the shoe is bees, a regular shoe. The B is redesigned. The B, you know, it's a, it's a symbol of your mm. home that now is called your mm. men. Mm. They changed the name. But that B on the... I think I saw it before, I, I sort of like it. I like the pin. There's a look on in the show where it's like pinned on, I think, everywhere. Like, what is that? The, the B or a pin? A B. It's a yeah. B pin, yeah. but it's like pinned all over. I think that's funny. But that, that B is also on the women's bags, like CD, and it has a B on it, if I'm not. Are these cross is eyes, it? are these new or have they... That's a cause thing. That's a cause thing, yeah. Oh, that's that's the redesign, yeah. yeah. Right. That's the collaboration. <laughs> Children's TV. <laughs> okay. So, what do we want to say? What's the what's the verdict? I I can I can feel you really didn't like it. I, I didn't I didn't see anyone it. cool wearing this. Like you have Lenny Kravitz in the audience. Like, I don't see anyone. Like Lenny Kravitz isn't gonna wear this, so I don't <laughs> think anyone cool's really gonna wear this. What what does cool mean? I Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> that was very clear. <laughs> and on this one, we agree. <laughs> I, I, don't, I honestly don't mind at all no. most of the pieces, and I don't mind at all the flowery prints. There's one thing that doesn't go well done with me here is the styling. Yeah, and I don't know why he used Melanie Ward again. It's Melanie Ward. It's right? Melanie Ward. Because I thought the Louis Vuitton, like his last Louis Vuitton show again was like really like... I don't know. It's that I, I'm missing something here. I, th I yeah. think those suits are, I'm sure they're very beautiful, especially from clothes when you can yeah. touch. If I'm, and they're very, I love the cut, I love the double breast, I love the yellow, I said it, and the pink. But I don't like the styling. It's a bit yeah. too, and now I can see a golf court in yeah. Miami. And, and she's like not, it's like not, not what I want to see. She's not like super relevant. It's like, a lot of this stuff feels very like late to me, like whether it's cause or like dip loaded the music. It's all like a bit late. He's like a bit late to things. But I mean late for that? It's you mean passe by late? Yeah, it's like gone and past the its yeah. point of it's being not really, you know, I mean, okay, I might get like shocked by saying this, but Kim is not really like the cool guy anymore. He's you know, there's a new generation now that's much cooler, that much that's much more in touch. Um, with what's happening. I don't think he's the, like, the now, oh, like, oh, what Kim does, that's gonna, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's part of the zeitgeist to say, like, he's... He's literally part of the exact zeitgeist set of, like, Kim Jones, Virgil Abloh. It's, yeah. like, exactly the, like, exactly, like, cool crowd that's driving things. You have Skepta in the front row. You have, it's, like, actually, like, he this is, is what we're supposed to consider exactly. the cool crowd. I, mean, I think that's, that's like, three years. years ago cool, though. Like, personally, like, it's the whole people that are involved with this. Like, it's, it's the same thing with um, Louis Vuitton, in my personal opinion, with Virgil. It's, it's not, I don't see it and think that's exciting. If I've seen it, like, so many times everywhere, and it's so kind of so popular that it, it's not cool. It can't be cool. Like I think, it's, I think it was cooler. 
I think I really like this collection. I'm, I'm probably I'm also very much in touch of what it signifies, you know, mm -hmm. Virgin Absolutely. Abbey. That's I, not the whole thing around that, but I think it was a clever collection. Well, it certainly doesn't fit very well. <laughs> no, that's a very, like, I'm not even going into discussing that kind of aesthetic. I just am talking about, like, whether we are considering that cool. You know, off-white, in my personal opinion, is not cool. And cannot, like, I cannot no. see a print, that, uh, that yeah. Glasgow airport no, print on the back and think the, it's cool. I, I think it's not cool to try to be cool. I'm like, well, that's it's a word that the, really makes me sick a little bit. It's yeah. like... What's the role of a what's designer cool? now? No, but I, I'm not criticizing. No, 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 no of course, I'm not, I agree. Saying, what's cool, and then you said Lenny Kravitz, I hear it, but it's yeah. like, does it need to be cool, or isn't cool something subjective? But is that what a designer needs to do now? Because I think that when you get to the point that you're at Dior, right, and you're, you have a certain customer base, yeah. are you, you know, like you said, it's a passe reference, but is that the reference that the customer's gonna get? Is yeah. that something I, that those people- What's your answer to that, as a designer? I think you have to. I mean, I think it's your responsibility to inform your audience on what you are yeah. looking at and what you internalize as being relevant. Oh, absolutely. Right. I thought you said it's your role to be cool. No, oh, I'm okay. saying. I'm saying. I think. I think it's. He's. This looks more like a choice to appeal to your customer rather than to inform them. I it's think to that's follow. To agree, it's to yeah. follow the consumer, not to lead them. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I agree, and that's not the role of a designer. Yeah. It's I don't, not aspirational. I don't that's what think you. Said yeah. as well. It's not like you're not gonna be like, oh my god, what's the, what's the thought process behind these clothes? Who's the design? Who was on the mood board? You don't really wonder that when it comes to this collection. I feel like it's very all, all laid out in front of you, and you know you see what you're getting. When I think like, again, I know I'm coming back to that Margiela collection, but it's, it was a thing where you could look at every look, and you just want to know why and what and how and mm. when and yeah, all of I that. Know. Like, I don't I, know, I tend to think that John, I mean, it's a little bit up there, you know? Yeah. I'm not surprised that it was extraordinary. For me, Marnie was, again, the, the type of collection, when I looked at it, it was also like a sense where I, I wanted to know about it, I wanted to learn about it. Um, yeah, it was very like, interesting. It didn't appeal to me aesthetically, but it was that's, very That's interesting. completely yeah, different. That you know, yeah, you're right. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not talking, like for I, me, Raft's wasn't, to, like I'm not a huge fan of him, but it was again, you looked at it, it and you wanted, to, yeah. you wanted to know about it. This was not, this is a, it's not an offensive collection, but it's definitely not. You see this trio, it's weird, the you're It's right. like, it's not like intriguing. And I don't, it's just not interested in the economy of cool. I think it's there. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. True. It's, true. It's it doesn't not exist even in trying, that area. No. And that, that is a very set space, and it's not in that space. I think it'll look very good when you're at the airport and you're waiting. But then you work with people like I don't think Matthew Dior is cool. I mean, as Dior, apart, let, let apart Hedy. Yeah, but let apart <laughs> yeah. that, it's the past. But I, would, I, would I ever think about going, sorry, Dior, but would I ever think about going into Dior for me and buy something? It never occurred to me. I don't know, I think it's very Madame, it's very French, it's mm. very Sixième uh, arrondissement, like they say, you know what I mean? There is a whole market for that. Yeah. It's very aspirational, it's very probably elegant. It's not the elegance I want. But it, it, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that that's, I think that's what Dior is supposed to be, you know? I, don't, I think you can, you can avoid feeling, trying to do something cool, because that feels tra a bit tragic in a way and still make it relevant. But that's... I don't think, I think trying to make it look like a cool brand when it's forced and it's not something that's associated with. I think you're right, I don't think Dior is that sort of... But do you think that King Jones imagine. acknowledges that he, what he's doing now is not cool? I'm pretty... No, like, if I was expecting with, something much if you, cooler. If you work with Matthew Williams, and if you work with Yuna Van, but like, you're not gonna, you're not, you obviously want to make a statement being cool. You know, if you're digging like the saddlebags that are obviously referen like referential of the kind of 90s John Galliano yeah. saddlebags, yeah. you obviously want to, you're looking at people that are buying secondhand bags and wearing them in Dalston. You definitely, if you're doing, you know, like. So what do you think happens? I think he does, I, I, I think we're signing, like I think we're thinking of him that he knows that he's designing for Dior and he doesn't care about being cool. I think he really still does care about being cool. Like I think he still thinks that this is cool, and whether it is or not, that's, you know, that I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna judge on it, 
but personally, I don't think this is as cool as he thought it will be, if um, that makes sense. I'm yeah, just it does. reminded of David Beckham and the Royal Wedding <laughs> that we just had, and Kim did the morning suit, didn't he? Do yeah. you remember that? It was a very classic, well-cut morning suit. Yeah, it was but the first again, outing of the Kim first the outing of Kim, yes. Do we have an image of that? Well, we have Victoria on the front row, I've seen. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen David, but, but there he is. There he mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah Victoria, was a classic, so, Victoria yeah. was obviously looked uh, as No, but as she, she was now at the Kim, at the Dior show. Yes. <laughs> it's just a classic morning suit, the way a morning suit is. How do you interpret that? I mean, the morning suit is a silly garment, let's be honest. <laughs> but no, he interprets morning it. Morning suit is what you wear to a wedding. In I know, room. I know. To a right. in the like tradition, then you can wedding. decide. No, but that's what traditional yeah. kind of you're wedding. supposed to wear to a wedding. In and the that morning. interpretation of something very traditional, I thought, you know, was quite was good. I I thought he was one of the best dressed guests at that wedding. But very classic. Right? Yes, absolutely yeah. classic. Yeah. Can't say I watched the royal wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the morning suit now. <laughs> I would have preferred to see more looks like this, to be honest with you. Cla a classic? Yeah, because I think there's something quite like oh. funny about how traditional it is. Like, I, I find that yeah. more interesting, the mix of something that's that exactly. sort of appropriate. The appropriateness of like Dior at the royal wedding um, and wearing this sort of like, I don't know. I think, on an Englishman. On an Englishman. I find it really, yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool, I, I think. Find it, yeah, the, I don't know. The, there's a sense of like, I don't know, it's slightly irreverent as well which I think is just really interesting versus something that feels very appropriate for the fashion show. This feels very like, designed for the show or designed for the, what it's supposed to be. Even the hair and makeup is something yeah. very preppy American, right? Mm. Or oh, very, is it, was it French fashion? I, I see more, I see American. more preppy American. I see, yeah, fraternities in Ivy League universities. Okay, then <laughs> do we want to end like this? A little bit underwhelmed, right? <laughs> A little bit underwhelmed. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Goodbye.